Where's Paul? Well, let's see now. I think he came back from Europe with us. Well, of course he did. We came back in a hurry, but not that fast. Now, I want to talk to him. About what? Well, it's none of your business, but since I need your help, I'll tell you. I want to take out a life insurance policy on Paul. On Paul? He's so healthy it's disgusting. Yes, but after some of those things that happened in Europe, I got to thinking. Now, one little accident, no more comic strip. I owe it to the firm to have Paul fully covered. The firm? John, you are the firm. <laughs> well, yes. Well, who's the beneficiary? Well, I am. John, you're a greedy vulture, and I won't help in any way. Oh, no, no, Pete. Pete, uh, you uh, know that Latin model that's been working? Carlotta? <laughs> oh, do I? <laughs> well, John, I will not be bribed. Uh, no, Pete. <laughs> That guy need insurance. <laughs> Paul, how long has it been since you've seen a doctor? Now, why should I see a doctor? I feel great. You see, you better sit down, Paul. You look horrible. <laughs> Stop it, will you? I'm in great shape. I just went out to the point and back. You look as if you went to the bottom and crawled back. <laughs> Handle your gloom somewhere else. Well, yeah, I'm going to get a robe on. <laughs> I can't go through with this, John. Pete. <laughs> He needs double indemnity. <laughs> I have an insurance doctor due here any minute. We've got to persuade Paul to see him. It's for his own good, really. Well, you never know. Of course. Of course. <laughs> she available for dinner? <laughs> of course. <clears throat> you can't see a doctor too often. <laughs> now, uh, what's this doctor bit? Paul, about you. Absolutely. Well, stop. I feel fine. Paul. How long has your hand been shaking like that? I don't see my hand shaking. Well, you couldn't. Your head is shaking in the same tempo. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> what are those dark circles under your eyes? Dark circles? Oh, no. I thought he was wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Look, fellas, uh, if you stop playing game, tell me what it's all about, maybe we can get together, huh? Right, right. You want to go first, John? Well, um, now the point is, Paul... <laughs> oh. I wonder who that can be. No, no, no. Uh, I'll get it. Oh, come in, Dr. Hocker. <laughs> Dr. Hocker, please come in. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh, go, a good bone structure. Good bone structure. <laughs> yes, sir. Dr. Hawkins, this is Peter Fairfield and Mrs. Paul Morgan, our patient, shall we say? Yeah, how do you do? How do you do? Doctor, I don't know what this is all about, but I feel fine. Good, good, good. But that's me to decide, young man, not you. But I'm not sick. Uh, don't be so defensive. Nobody said you were. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, Doctor, uh, doctor that's the wrong one. Oh, good thing, too. What's wrong with that? Never mind that. Sit down, Paul. Why? Uh, sit down, young man. Uh, now, uh, any childhood diseases? The usual. Serious operations in the last five years? No. How many times a year do you go up in airplanes? What's that got to do with my health? Nothing, unless one comes down suddenly. <laughs> yeah. John, is this an insurance examination? <sighs> Have you ever been turned down? Lots of times, but never by an insurance company. Now, this can be explained very easily, Paul. Will you explain it, Pete? What's wrong with me? <laughs> this is just a normal business precaution. You take out a policy on my life, and you're the beneficiary? Well, yes. You say, ah, uh, out. No, no, ah, uh, out. Uh, All of you. He's, he's overworked. Uh, we'll come back another time, Doctor. Why don't you take out a policy and make me the beneficiary? 
because you hate having me around. <laughs> And you. You know what they were up to all the time. More or less. How could you do a thing like that to me? You should know what you did to me. What? <laughs> Think. Why did he get so mad? It was merely a formal business transaction. I think it was terrible. Who asked you? Well, maybe if you'd come right out and explain it to him, Mr. Larson, instead of trying to trick him into it. Nonsense. How can I be open and above board about anything as tricky as this? I see what you mean. Now, we must be realistic, Elaine. Suppose, just suppose, something happens to Paul. The bachelor at large strip vanishes. Gone. Why? Why? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Well, lots of other strips have been taken over by someone else. Elaine, you're right. I'll get Paul in the study. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, because maybe it was honest and above board. <laughs> Never mind that. Get me uh, Emery Farnsworth. The one who draws Stanley the Squirrel? Right, he's a good draftsman. But Mr. Larson, he draws just for children. Isn't that rather a long jump into Bachelor at Large? He's studious and industrious, and he stays home nights. He'll work while Paul Morgan plays. Oh, yes, sir. But if Bachelor at Large starts looking squirrely, don't complain. I have to admit it, Paul. I was selfish. You're a greedy vulture. Gee, why don't you be original? That's what Pete called me. He was right. Now, let's face the facts, Paul. The strip may be immortal, but you are not. Thanks a lot, sunshine. You don't understand, Paul. It's just that I want to make life easier for you. That's why I'm getting you an assistant. Assistant? Uh, what's the catch? Paul, I keep getting the feeling that you don't trust me. You do? Yes. I don't. <laughs> Paul, look at it this way. Why not get someone to take over part of the load? Someone to do the, the pick and the shovel work, to take away the pressures of constant deadlines. Yeah, why not? It'll give me a little more time to myself. I can catch up on a few other things. Oh, Paul, my boy, you can catch up on them every night of the week. <laughs> of course, it won't be easy to find someone who can do my style. Oh, I don't think it'd be too tough. You don't? Uh, no, no. As, as a matter of fact, I, um, I think I found him already. Uh, Paul Morgan, uh, meet Emery Farnsworth. How do you do, Mr. Morgan? Oh, hi. Say, how's Stanley the Squirrel? You know my strip? Sure. Good delineation, good technique. Oh, thank you. Hey, Paul, Emery is a great fan of Bachelor at Large. Oh, I certainly am, Mr. Morgan. Uh, Paul, are you really actually depicting your own adventures in the strip? To quite an extent, yes. Think of that. Yes. Now, when can uh, Emery start? How about right now? Could I? Pull up a drawing board. Thank you. <laughs> I generally draw my girls a little more... That's perfect. Thank you. Keep it up. Here you are, you lovely creature, you. Ah, this is the life. I really don't think Mr. Larson meant for you to enjoy it this much, Paul. Who cares about motive, Elaine? Performance is what counts, and Emery performs like a jewel. He must work all the time. He does. You know, all my life I've dreamed of owning an oil well. I sleep, it pumps. <laughs> now I've got one. Emery? Emery.
an otherwise perfect character. He used to work. Ah, uh, never again. Here, <laughs> here. <laughs> Paul, did you ever get the feeling you're being watched? Well, I've had that feeling for about the last five minutes. Emery! What are you doing here? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean for you to see me. Come on over and join us. I couldn't do that. Pull up a chair and sit down. <laughs> Emery, Emery, you know Elaine and Carlotta. How do you do? Hi, Emery. I thought you said you never went out at night. I prefer not to. Why? Well, man is not normally a nocturnal animal, such as the cat. Emery, there are cats and cats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. When I was only drawing Stanley the Squirrel, I used to confine my observation periods to the daylight hours. The squirrel's not having much of a nightlife. <laughs> You're observing us? You, principally. The others, incidentally. Oh. You don't mind? I mean, since the strip depicts your own adventures, if I didn't observe, I would have nothing to draw. Oh, I can see that, yes. Oh, I can go back to the next booth. No, no, Emery. Sit right there and uh, observe. Thank you. I should eat nuts. <laughs> last night hit me with a pocketbook. You broke the date last night with me. Told me you were working. Uh, well, research work. <laughs> Why don't we go inside and talk it over? I am going inside to call a cab. You are staying here, you and your shadow. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> I gave him the word. Emery, I said, your observation period is at an end. <laughs> How'd he take it? He apologized for disturbing my privacy. He's too nice a guy, Pete. He can't trust anybody that nice. Oh, don't just look at his drawbacks. Think of him pumping away your own little oil well. Yeah, I guess you're right. Pete. Hmm? What's the matter? He's not working, he's just sitting there. Resting? He never rests. Anything the matter? Sorry, I think I've gone dry. Emery, why don't you relax? Call up a girl, go out and have some fun. I don't think I know any girls. <laughs> That's easy. Paul and I'll fix you up. You wouldn't mind, really? Because I think I could pick up enough material in one night to keep me going for a month. Emery, take it a little easy the first spin around the track. It's your foot on the throttle. I'll hang on if it kills me. Huh? Let's 
Let's go out on the deck, huh? Is there anything we can do alone? Sure. Something wrong? You sure did, Emery. Paul, take me home. Enough is enough. I rather liked it. Who asked you? Come on. Evening over? All over. <laughs> Too bad. Just getting warmed up. <laughs> and, um, yours very truly, etc., etc. Well, Paul, what a delightful surprise. I want to talk to you, John. Alone. I think you have a phobia about being alone, Paul. I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Well, Elaine says you had quite a party last night. Let's not fence around, John. Emery Farnsworth is a well-meaning young man and a good artist who's ruining my life. Oh, come now, Paul. It can't be that bad. It's worse. Being observed was bad enough, but now he says he has to do everything I do in order to draw it. Does he? John, you've got to send him back to Stanley the Squirrel. Oh. I'm serious. If you don't do something about it, I will. Like what? Like resign. It's pretty strong talk. I mean every word of it. Oh, it'll be a shame to resign. These latest drawings of Bachelor at Large are better than anything you've ever done. They're Emery's. <laughs> yeah, I know. John, my contract says that I own the strip. Now, uh, you didn't read the fine print. You merely have a contract to draw it. Of course, if you want to resign. John, you're a low-down, conniving, double-crossing. Oh, Paul, Paul, you have misjudged me. All I wanted to do was to make sure that Bachelor at Large goes on forever. And it will. This emery is dynamite, pure dynamite. John, why don't you go jump in a lake? <laughs> Paul here? Shut him thank you. Good, good. <laughs> no, thanks. Not while I'm loafing. <laughs> Paul! How'd everything work out? Fine, great. I may kill someone. Hmm. Emery? John, yourself? I'm thinking it over. Uh-huh. Pete, have you ever had your whole character taken over by someone else? No. Nope. No one ever wanted to. Well, it's horrible. <laughs> Emery's not only living my life, he's doing it better than I am. Paul. What? I just had a frightening flash of genius. Look, Emery's leading your life. Right. And you'd like to shake him. Right. Well, look at yourself. Look at Emery. All you've got to do is step up the pace. How? Go into a crash program. Water skiing, swimming, diving, tumbling, hit the night spots, wear him down. It's a cinch. You could be right. <laughs> Poor Emery. They'll have to scrape him up with a putty knot. <laughs> oh, Pete, you're diabolical. <laughs> I know. Wonderful. <laughs> Ready to fold, Paul. <laughs> Poor guy. Ah, uh, uh, show no mercy. Now, to top everything off, you do a round of the nightclubs. 
tonight? Tonight? Remember, the quickest way is the kindest. Poor Emery. <laughs> Let's have it. What time did he surrender? He didn't. What? He stayed with it till the last dog was hung. Me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. I don't know where he was getting it from, but he had it. It's his dying gasp. Today, you give him the coup de grace. Poor Emery. Poor Emery? <laughs> Paul. Excuse me, you remember Dr. Hocker. How do you do? Sure. Well, I got Paul's message. He capitulated. Capitulated? Agreed completely to let me take out a policy on him. Oh, then you're going to take Emery off the job. Not on your life. I'm going to insure both of them. Where are they? Yeah. Oh, uh, consulting on the strip, probably. <laughs> no, no, no. Not him. Oh, good thing. Good thing, too. What's wrong with this? Never mind that. Come with me, Doctor. Just Where? follow me right into the bed. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Paul! Been working too hard, Doctor. Emery. Emery! <laughs> well, they're all yours, Doctor. You. You go ahead. <laughs> you put Emery back full-time on Stanley the Squirrel? Because Bachelor at Large is much too important to be entrusted to just one man. When I have two men who can draw it, I'd be a fool to let either one of them go. John, you are... I know, I know. I'm a hard-headed businessman. Oh, are you finished already, Doctor? Mr. Larson? Yes, yes, yes. You can't get a penny's worth of insurance on either one of those men. Why not? Complete physical exhaustion. <laughs> Not listening, John. Paul, I don't want to insure you. That was wrong, and it was selfish of me. Still not listening. And I don't care if you're behind in your deadline. Your health is much more important. Thanks. And I'm taking Emery Farnsworth off Bachelor at Large completely. He just, he, he just, well, he didn't work out. John, what do you want? Well, Paul, I, I'm in a bit of a bind. Do you think you could possibly do a few strips on Stanley the Squirrel? <laughs> Stanley the Squirrel? <laughs> Come here. Could I possibly let a man like that draw cartoons for the children of America? Uh, that's your problem. <laughs> Next week, the Tab Hunter Show will be brought to you by West Clocks, a division of General Time Corporation.
Thank you. 